Hi, Andrea. How are you today? Hi, Roman. I'm, I'm well. I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm very good. So just before we get started, if you'd like to introduce yourself and let, you know, let us know who you are. Sure. So my name is Andrea. Um, I am 29 years old and I am a host specialist at World Packers. Uh, before I worked for World Packers, which is a volunteering platform, I was a volunteer for them. So I volunteered in 12 different countries around Europe and the Middle East. Um, and now I just naturally progressed my volunteer route uh, to becoming part of the company. And now I am actually helping behind the scenes, managing hosts in the UK and Italy. Awesome. Awesome. So what is World Packers? What is it? What is it? So World Packers is a volunteering platform. So basically we foster collaborative exchanges between hosts and travelers. So if you're a traveler and you want to have a different experience, have a bit of a more local experience, and you want to also save a bit of money, I, I feel like volunteering is a great option for you. So what we do is we connect you to hosts around the world who are willing to offer free accommodation. Also, sometimes free meals, they are willing to teach you some skills, uh, networking, these sort of things. Um, in exchange for a few hours of your time and your energy to help them with, um, it can be like a hostel, uh, so you can help them with reception. It can be a farm, so you can help them harvesting olives in Italy, for example. Uh, we have also social projects, so you can help uh, by teaching kids English uh, in a country in South America, for example. So there's different types of opportunities, but essentially it's exchanging uh, your time and your energy for accommodation, learning new skills, just putting yourself out there, getting exposed to something a little bit different and having a bit more of a local experience whilst you're traveling. Awesome, awesome. So you pretty much explained the second question, <laughs> how does it work? <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. Uh, and, uh, why, because you say you was a, a volunteer before, so why did you choose to become a volunteer? Why, what inspired you to do that? Um, I think at the time, um, I'd been living in the UK for seven years. I'm originally from Brazil, but I lived in, in England for seven years. And I'd just been uh, made redundant from my job. So I was at a time in my life where I was looking to try something new. I wasn't very happy with the job I had. Um, so I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do from then on um, and just have some different experiences, new experiences. And um, I had found uh, an, a freelance gig that allowed me to work online so I could work from anywhere in the world. Um, but it just didn't pay me enough because I was just getting started in that whole like industry of remote working and all that. Um, so I was also looking for a cheap alternative so I could travel for longer and I could go to different places which I couldn't normally afford. So volunteering kind of combined these two perspectives, right? So it makes traveling a lot cheaper, but it also gives you a different experience of traveling as well. How old were you when you did your first experience? I was 28. 28. Is there a minimum age to, to get started? So you need to be at least 18 years old. Uh, that, that's the minimum. <laughs> That's the minimum. So then uh, if you want to then apply for our opportunities on World Packers, uh, you will see that each position has a different requirement. So the hosts can set the age requirements to whatever they'd like. But we have 8,000 hosts, over 8,000 hosts on the platform. So you will definitely going to find something for your age range. All right. Uh, let me carry on. So what was the last one that you, you did and what was the, the process and everything? Yeah, um, so the most recent opportunity I, I had was in England. Um, I volunteered at, a, at an equestrian centre in rural England, like in the west part of the country, almost on the border with Wales. So they were a family 
uh, they the had horses as well. They, they had horses for competitions and also for TV commercials, these sort of things. Um, and I helped out by uh, just uh, cleaning up the stables, also looking after the horses, like making sure they were fed, uh, that they had water, uh, a bit of grooming as well, which was my favorite part of, of the experience. Yeah, taking them out for a walk. Um, just the whole like horse care thing um, and in the meantime we all the volunteers we were staying in the family home which was really nice to have a bit of a family vibe as well um, and I, I think this is what I was looking for because I'd been coming from like big cities in Europe and I wanted a more rural place so I just went on the platform I searched for opportunities in England and I selected one of the filters we have so many filters for different like vibes and I selected like, oh, I want a rural vibe. Um, and then this position came up. I had a look at the reviews. The reviews were amazing. They were very experienced hosts. So I applied and uh, got accepted. And it was a really, really amazing experience. Did you like horses before to go there? Or did you just find out when you were there? It was an interesting thing because uh, I used to have my own horse when I was a kid. Uh, and I used to ride, I learned how to ride when I was five years old. So, but that was like a part of my life that I'd been really disconnected from. Like I hadn't ridden a horse in a very long time. And when I came there, I kind of like rekindled this, this passion. Like I found out that I, I, I rediscovered this passion. Um, and it was really good. <laughs> So how long does it take for someone want to book from the booking to going there? How long does it take normally? So there's all there's different types of people. You know, some people like to book well in advance, and you can apply for a position on the platform um, up to six months in advance. So I can mm -hmm. apply today to volunteer in six months' time. Um, uh, I, I guess the average is four weeks. So people tend to apply four weeks before they are due to travel. Um, and because, you know, you, you, you will start talking to the host. You want to get to know each other before you go there, right? You just don't want to show up and not knowing what to expect. So you have a conversation with the host. Some hosts like to have a video call as well uh, to get to know you better, to give you an opportunity to ask questions. So just like four weeks is a good time frame to give you time to find the perfect experience, to, to go through that um, messaging process and then be accepted, book your flights. But having said that, if you, if you want to find help, oh, sorry, if you want to find a position last minute, it's also possible. The platform has a filter for last minute help. So say you are in a ho having a holiday in France and you just want to find a position there and then if you found out about World Packers, you can do that. So you can find, I have found a position in less than seven days, like between the day I found it and the day I arrived, it was less than seven days. So it's, it's possible as well. So how many hours like a week can the person work for the, for the host? So the volunteers contribute um, the average and also the recommended by World Packers is 25 hours a week. Um, you have positions that uh, offer a bit less than that. So you might be helping someone for 18 hours. I, I've done a volunteer experience that was 18 hours a week. Um, and the maximum that we allow is 32 hours a week. Um, and this is also something that you can select based on the, your lifestyle and what you're looking for. So for example, digital nomads, if you already have a job, like you don't want to help for 32 hours a week because you won't have time, but there will be positions that will ask for a bit for less than that for 20, 18 hours. Um, so that works as well. So it depends on what you're looking for. Uh, but we do uh, limit the maximum to 32 hours because we don't want the position to be like a job. Uh, we're not trying to foster like um, a job opportunity. It's more like a collaborative exchange. It's, a, it's, it's, supposed, it's not supposed to be transactional and you're not supposed to be there all the time. You're supposed to have time 
to actually explore the city and to, to like, you know, enjoy the surroundings and all that. And how long the expression last? Is it two weeks, one month? Maybe? So, how many yeah, months? there are, there are different options. I mean, uh, the host will set, uh, so in each position, you will see the hours per week and you also see the minimum amount of time that they allow and also the maximum. So you can have, I, I, I know people who had volunteer experiences for three days, four days a week, it's possible. Um, I like to have like a month. I feel like that's a good a balance because by the end of, you know, less than that, I feel like you don't have much time to connect properly. And more than that, you start getting a bit bored maybe because you'll be doing the same tasks and it's just not stimulating anymore. So I feel like four weeks is the optimal. Um, but you can do, during the pandemic, unfortunately, a lot of people were stranded in countries and then a lot of people volunteered for three months in the same place. Um, this was something that, that happens as well. Um, it, it depends on what you're looking for. Uh, the platform limits the maximum, again, to three months, just because, again, we're trying to shy away from that uh, job experience, right? It's supposed to be a, a, an easier thing. It's supposed to be a more relaxed environment. All right. <laughs> Did you receive anything in exchange for your, your help? from your host? Any, sorry, what? Do you receive anything in exchange? Do the host offer you something? Um, so what they offer is, first and foremost, free accommodation. So uh, you will have a free place to stay. Um, and some hosts, and this will be very clearly described on the position, they will also offer you meals. Um, apart from that, there's other things like if they have a bar, they might offer you free drinks at the bar. Um, if they are in a, in a beach, they might offer you surf lessons or access to surfboards. So there's all these little things that they can offer, all these little perks that they can offer as well. There is no monetary reward in the experiences uh, because we feel like when you add money into this relationship, it becomes something transactional. So the host would be kind of like, well, I'm giving you money, so I don't need to do anything else for you. But what we want really is we want the host to give you time and their time and their... Oh, sorry. Did you hear that? I'm going to start. Oh, I, <laughs> I don't know what it is. Let me just switch it off. Ah, it's my WhatsApp on the browser. There you go. There you go. Because what we really want is we want the host to give uh, you their time and their energy, spend time with you, tell you about the city, uh, show you around. And if they give you money, it, it kind of feels like, well, here's your money. I don't need to do any of that anymore. So we don't encourage that. Um, what can happen is some social projects like NGOs or even an eco project, they might charge a fee for the volunteer just to keep the project running. But again, this is very clearly described on the position. If you're not okay with that, you can absolutely look for positions that don't have this additional fee. All right. So what was the budget? Because to create the accommodation, uh, most of the, the people would get the accommodation, some of them would get the food. And how much do we need in their pocket to be there? Well, the budget, the recommended budget for them? I guess it, it vastly depends on where you're going and what your host is offering. So, for example, during this experience when I was in England at this equestrian centre, I spent a month with the family and they offered all the meals and free access to the kitchen. They would ask us like what we wanted them to buy. Um, and in the, four we in the four weeks I spent there, I didn't spend a single penny. So it was a free trip. I had to buy the ticket, like the, the train from London to, the, to them, and that was it. Um, and, uh, but it depends. So if you're in a volunteer experience without meals, uh, you will have to factor in the, the food, right? And then if you're in Western Europe, this might be a bit more costly. If you are in a country like Russia or in Eastern Europe, you'll probably spend a bit less also in South America, you know, so it, it depends a lot on where you are. 
But if you are on a strict budget, you can absolutely just search for positions that have meals included. We have a filter for that. So you can just consider those positions because then you can fit uh, the, your budget to that, that uh, route, I guess. How many countries are available at the moment? Uh, we have hosts in almost every country. I can't tell you the number for sure, but like name a country and we'll have a host there. <laughs> All right, that's awesome. We spoke about the, um, the, the age earlier. So the minimum mm -hmm. age was 18. Is there, mm -hmm. like a, for example, if you're over 50 years old and you can't do it, is there like a... There is no maximum and maximum. we have some... Yes, there is no maximum. And we have some volunteers who are in the 50s, 60s. We love them so much because it takes a lot of guts, doesn't it, to, to at that stage of your life awesome. to try something like this. Um, so compared to a working holiday, for example, there's a maximum of 25 years old among the 25 years. <laughs> exactly. Awesome. This is awesome for most of people. Yes, and we are, you know, I work with hosts in the UK and Italy, and I'm always encouraging them to increase the age uh, requirements to give some space for those people as well. Uh, and they always, whenever they try it and they have an older volunteer, they always, they get positively surprised, I guess, uh, because these people come with a different age. And what about if a family wants to come to help and they have children with them? Is it something that's possible as well? So uh, people who are under 18, they can't take part in the experience. So, for example, your, your child, if you want to volunteer and uh, you have a child, you can volunteer. The child can come with you, uh, subject to the host being OK with that, of course. Um, and, but the, the, your child cannot help you in the hostel or in the project, right? Um, we can we also have plans uh, for couples um so we have the solo plans where you buy just for yourself but th this the couples plan offers a big big discount if you want to volunteer with a friend or with uh, your partner or if your child given that they are over 18. Yeah. um so it's a it's a big opportunity as well because the discount is almost 50 percent. so it, it's a good Good thing if you're thinking of traveling with someone else. Awesome. What was your best experience for you and why? Um, I have two, but like I had, I had to think really hard about this question. But uh, my favorite <laughs> experience so far was um, I volunteered in a glamping site which is basically a camping site but it, it, the tents are, are very comfortable and nice you, you, you sleep on a bed uh, they are like teepees so you can actually stand inside the tents um, and it was a glamping site in Estonia in a forest so um, I lived in a forest for, for a month and uh, I was helping the owner of the, the glamping site uh, to cook for the, the guests and they liked to cook like very gourmet meals. So she taught me a lot. Like she taught me a lot of cooking skills, recipes, techniques and things. So it was really, really a fulfilling experience in that sense. But also the fact that I was living in the forest in Estonia. So <laughs> it was a bit insane. I mean, they had internet so I could work while I was there. It was, it was I wasn't like completely disconnected. But you are always surrounded by trees and animals and they had an outdoor hot tub so you could go into the hot tub like and look at the stars at night. They had a, a, a sauna that they built themselves, a beautiful clay lake nearby. So it was a, an amazing experience uh, and um, you know, something. Yes, yes. So you could swim in the lake. The lake was very close to, to where they were. Um, and they had a beach as well, but it, it's one of those things I would I would have never found out about that project if I wasn't on World Packers. Like uh, so, the, the platform actually gives you a lot of knowledge about what's out there, like all the different types of accommodation that exists. It, it was really really cool. That sounds really really good. <laughs> yeah, give it a try. It's good. I will. <laughs> One requirement age. Um,
So obviously you meet a lot of people when you're doing this as well. Yeah, there's always a, a team of volunteers. Uh, maybe during the pandemic, it was a bit uh, quieter, of course, uh, but normally you're going to be part of a team of volunteers and staff as well. And you connect with a lot of people. Um, and, you know, the volunteers, they always, they're always like a little family, you know, and um, you, you keep in touch with them. I, I, keep, I kept in touch with so many people that I volunteered with. Some of them I went on to meet again in other parts of the country and, oh, and like other parts of the world even, and just like travel around together. So, and, you know, that, that experience is so intense. It's so like important in your life that you kind of bond very quickly also with the hosts um, because you know when the host sits down and spends time with you and they take the, the effort to show you around so a good example of that was I volunteered in Lebanon in a hotel uh, and it was this was in the middle of the pandemic I got stranded in Lebanon and then I found this experience and then I started volunteering there and there was no guests, uh, a bit of staff hanging around the hotel and it was just me and the host. And then like the host would just be like taking, driving me to see parts of Lebanon. And like, it was his entertainment, you know, like I, I feel like um, having a guest, I wasn't like a guest, I was a volunteer, but like having someone around gave him a bit of life, you know, a bit of energy. And he would just like, Andrea, like pack your stuff, let's go to Biblos. And then we like get in the car and then he would drive me there. It was, it, I would have never lived an experience like that if I wasn't volunteering. Um, so it you is a very... Keep in, touch, a, keep in touch with the volunteer and with the host. Oh. Yeah, so for this host, I built a website for his hotel. This was my, my task there. Um, and then sometimes he messages me and he's like, yeah, I'm getting a lot of bookings for your website. Thank you. It's so cool. Oh, he has a question about the website. He goes like, oh, sorry to bother you. Um, so it's really nice. And I mean, when you go back, you always have a place to stay. He's, he told me like, oh, come back, bring your mother to visit Lebanon. <laughs> my mother is, is half Lebanese. Like she needs to visit Lebanon. And I will show her around. So it's these are connections for life, you know. It's something that you don't get in any other way. All right, that sounds really, really good. <laughs> <laughs> and so you said before that you traveled to a lot of countries. What was mm -hmm. your your first country? Like most of people, maybe they want to travel to their own country to start? Or is it better to go somewhere else? What would you recommend? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Um, a lot of people feel a bit intimidated because volunteering is something quite new. Um, so for a first experience, I would say it would be nice to maybe start in your own country. I'm sure we're going to have uh, lots of options in your own country. Um, Pardon? Some people are maybe scared to go abroad for the first time. Or... Yeah, they don't know what to expect and they don't want to find themselves in a different country in a new experience. So, um, yeah, absolutely. Try maybe your country first. Try an experience that isn't like too far away from what you know in terms of. So if you're someone who always stays in hostels, maybe have an experience in a hostel instead of like a wine farm somewhere. Um Try something a bit more simple, uh, see how you feel. Um, and always, you know, we have a, a great support team at World Packers. So if you're feeling uneasy or during the experience, you feel a bit nervous about something, you can always contact them. The girls are super, super helpful to give you any advice. Um, and I guess as well, you can maybe volunteer with a friend to feel a little bit less intimidated. I didn't do that. My first experience was because I was leaving England. Uh, my visa had expired. So I went to uh, Portugal. And my first experience was in Portugal, which I guess it, it was good because uh, I speak English. But if I didn't speak English, uh, it would be good because it's a country that speaks Portuguese. So that's another thing that you can think about as well. Maybe have your first experience in a country where you speak the language. Um, and start simple, uh, start with a host that has a lot of experiences. So you can see on the position, all the reviews uh, that the other travelers left. 
You can also speak to the travelers that were there before. So if you have any specific questions about anything, you can ask them. Um, so, you know, the platform has a lot of, uh, it gives you a lot of uh, reassuring uh, opportunities. So you can speak to the travelers, you can check the reviews, you can speak to our support, uh, look for volunteer positions near you. Um, and yeah, it, it's a very, very safe um, Indonesian option. Environment. Indonesian so, environment to find a host or not? It's not a requirement at all. Um, each host will set the requirements of language as well. They can set which languages they need you to speak and at what level. Um, and, you know, some hosts will require a bit of English, basic or intermediate, um, but some hosts won't. And again, you can use the filters on the platform and select, you know, this is my language requirement, what, what's out there for me. And there are several uh, positions that uh, can accommodate people who don't speak English. Besides, uh, the volunteer experience is a great opportunity to learn English as well. I, I met... I met a lot of volunteers who arrived. They couldn't put two words together. And after two months or like a month, they were actually like understanding much better. They were like interacting because it really puts you to the test. It exposes you. You have to speak English. There's no other way. It's really good. <laughs> so how, how much is the membership for, for people? Good. Um, so we have a few different plans. Uh, the cheapest plan that we have is called uh, the TRIPS plan, which essentially just uh, gives you access to the platform to volunteer, right? So this plan costs $49 uh, a year, and you can apply for as many positions as you want. You can live as many experiences as you want in that year. Um, and then World Packers also has an, uh, an online course platform. So we teach things like specific skills, like languages and, you know, programming and things like that. But we also do like how to plan your trip. If you want to become a digital nomad, there's courses offered by digital nomads, giving you some tips and things like that. So if, well, if, <clears throat> if you want access to the platform of courses as well, you can uh, sign up for the pack plan, which is $99 uh, a year. And if you are with a friend, uh, I, remember I mentioned there's a big discount if you're traveling to people, you can acquire, oh, uh, you can sign up for the couples trip plan. So again, you will have access to the platform to volunteer as many times as you want. And instead of paying $99, which would be the price of two solo trips plans, you pay 59. So it is much, much cheaper if you travel with two people. Just remember that you have to always travel together. Okay. Um, and the, yeah, if you're traveling with your boyfriend or girlfriend or, you know, a friend, it is a good option as well. Awesome. Uh, we pretty much covered it all. <laughs> Very quick. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have maybe anything to say or anything you would like to, to recommend to the future or would like to apply with World Packer? Um, I think it, it's good to mention as well that um, volunteering really makes you stand out if you're trying to apply for like undergraduate course or a master's degree or even a job. You know, a lot of people have the same standard experiences in the CV, but when you put something like this, like I helped cook in a forest in Estonia, you know, it really makes you stand out. Um, <laughs> So it can be, you know, it's not a job and it's not supposed to be a job, but it can be something that really furthers your, your career, you know, if, if you want. Um, and also just learn not only technical skills, like you can learn how to, you, know, you can learn a lot about hospitality, you can learn how to cook, but you also develop a lot of soft skills, which I think, you know, a lot of young people who stay at home all the time, they don't develop these things uh, as quick exactly. as they, they could. And I think these experiences really make you learn how to communicate, how to expose your opinions, how to have, uh, how to deal with conflicts, how to deal with uh, different cultures and backgrounds. And I think this is so, so, so useful, something that, that is not taught in school as well. 
Um, so I think that's a great use. A lot of people refer to volunteering as like, oh, it's a cheap way to travel. And it is, but it's so much more than that. Uh, and I hope that people that are watching us or listening to us, they give it a go and they share with us then the learnings because it, it, it was a real uh, life-changing experience for me. So I just want to add that we will add all the, the information in the description below, guys. So if you want to participate in this program, we highly recommend it. I cannot wait for the COVID and the borders open here in Malaysia so I can finally go somewhere, <laughs> participate as well in one of your programs. And um, if you have not subscribed yet, don't forget to hit that subscribe button uh, below. And we will see you on the next video. Thank you very much, Andrea. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you. I'm just going to stop oh. uh, recording now.